Preston Physics Grade 11 Kinematics Note 6 Velocity and Acceleration as Vectors In the last note, we learned how to use motion dot diagrams. We mainly used velocity. In this note, we're going to use velocity and acceleration, and we're going to add vectors using the motion dot diagrams. For the first example, we're going to look at a sprinter. Let's say the sprinter has constant acceleration. So we're going to represent their velocity and their acceleration at five points to start a race. So they start with some velocity and some acceleration. Then they have a second velocity, which seems to be the first velocity with the acceleration added. The third velocity is the same thing. Notice how our acceleration vectors are continually the same length, whereas our velocity vectors are increasing each time. The way we determine how far these vectors have increased by each time is by how long the acceleration vector is that's associated at that exact same moment. So to get vector 2, we take vector 1 of velocity and add the acceleration that's happening at the same time. That's going to equal the length of vector 2. We can use this same process to find the length of the rest of our vectors. Now in the second example, we're looking at a skydiver who's falling out of a plane. Now whenever we start one of these diagrams, we always assume that our first velocity vector is equal to zero, unless it's otherwise stated. Even though we draw the vector in, it still represents zero meters per second. Now our acceleration in this case is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. You're going to later find out that that's the acceleration due to gravity. Now each of our dots are representing one second. So every second we're adding 9.8 meters per second to our velocity. We're going in the negative direction because we're moving down. So we have a negative velocity each time. So when you're adding these velocities in, you have to make sure you're adding a negative each time. Even though on velocity 2 and velocity 3 we haven't shown the negative, it should be in the negative direction because we're accelerating down. With our first two examples, we had no initial velocity. With our last example, we're moving and we're coming to a stop. So you can notice our dots are getting closer together. The key thing in this example is that our velocity and acceleration vectors are in the opposite direction. Our velocity vectors start out large, and because we're adding what we have as our acceleration, which is in the opposite direction, our velocity vectors are getting smaller. Notice our acceleration vectors are still the same length, and each time we're getting smaller with velocity. Now our last velocity vector will be a length of zero, and you'll also notice that our last acceleration vector should be a length of zero as well, otherwise we would start moving in the opposite direction. See if you can finish the last two examples and the question at the bottom on your own. The second example follows the same pattern as the shot put in yesterday's note. The questions assigned for this section are 27 A and B and 28 from your yellow duotank.